Welcome to Electric Field 1. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, this video is going to be about um, visualizing electric fields and how we do charging and creating electric fields. So um, we visualize electric fields and we can draw electric fields in, in much the same way as we would draw a gravitational field. So if we have a, uh, a negative charge there, for example, then the electric field lines um, are going to look just like the electric just like the gravitational field lines would look whoops just like the gravitational field lines would look around the earth um the the general rules are that they always meet a surface at 90 degrees um they always point in the direction of the force um and they uh, they never cross over each other okay so um, for electric field, for gravitational fields, it's, it's uh, slightly more simple because you can't have a, ma a negative mass, but with, a, uh, with an electric field, you can have a positive or a negative charge. So we have to define electric fields in terms of the, uh, the, the force on a positive charge. So the reason that all these arrows, um, the reason that all these arrows are pointing inwards is because the force is on a positive charge. It's the direction of the force on a positive charge. So a positive charge is going to be attracted to the negative charge. So those arrows are pointing towards the negative charge. Now, again, just like with gravitational fields, if we zoom in so far that the surface appears flat, then all of those field lines are going to be as a negative charges, all of those field lines are going to be parallel with each other. They're all going to be meeting the surface at 90 degrees and they're going to be pointing downwards because the negative charge is down is at the bottom and the positive charge is going to be attracted to the negative charge. So um, what else is significant about the field lines? Well, again, just like with gravitational field lines, the electric field lines, the, the distance between them represents the strength of the field so the closer the lines are the stronger the force experienced and so the stronger the electric field now how do we um, draw when we have multiple charges coming together well again we can just imagine what the um whoops, what the um what the, what the force is going to be on a positive charge so a positive charge is going to be repelled from the positive charge and attract it to a negative charge. Now remember the field lines can't cross and they always leave the surface at 90 degrees. So they would look something like this. And so on and so on. All right? So that's if you have multiple charges. Now, what if you have what if you have uh, what if you have the same charges? What if we have if we had two positive charges here? Then a positive charge is going to be repelled from both of them. So it's going to travel along those lines because remember the lines can't cross over each other. So those the, if we put a positive charge in this electric field, it's just going to try hard to get away from each of these charges. So it may look something like that. Okay, remember 90 degrees of meeting at the surface, the arrows are the direction of the force on a positive charge. Okay, so uh, finally, how do we create a charged surface? Um, well, you may remember this from, uh, from GCSE, but uh, you can create a charged surface by rubbing two insulators together. A common experiment at GCSE is to get a plastic rod and a nylon cloth and rub them together. And the friction causes transfer of electrons from one to the other. Uh, and because electrons are negatively charged, the thing that gains electrons gets a negative charge and the thing that loses electrons gets a positive charge. So then you end up with a two charged objects. And you may have done that to, to pick up some small paper discs or um, something maybe to, um, if you move it close to someone's hair, it maybe uh, lifts up some of their hair. Now there's another way to charge things um, and to give them a permanent charge and that's called charging by induction. So if you ima imagine that you have some kind of a metal dome, you may have seen, seen a van de Graaff generator or something like that. If you have a metal dome and you move something that's already charged, 
next to it, let's say that this has a positive charge, this charged object here, and you move that closer to this dome. Now the dome starts off as neutral, but because this is positive over here, then all the negative charges inside the conducting dome are gonna to move to the right side. Now, if you connect that dome to the earth, then more electrons can flow up here. And so you then end up with a dome full of electrons because they're all being attracted to this positive charge. Then you remove the connection and you've got a dome full of electrons. You can then remove the positive charged item, but the electrons stay in the dome because there's no connection to Earth anymore, so they've got nowhere to go. That is called charging by induction, and that is the other way that you can create a static charge. This is all called static charge because those charges aren't moving anywhere. Static means not moving, and those charges either in the rod or in this dome, or in the cloth, none of those charges are actually going anywhere. So there's no movement of charge, so it's static charge. So those are two different ways of creating static charge. One is charging by friction, and one is charging by induction.